Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Sean, and in today's video, I'm gonna be giving my top advice for how I scored in the top 2% in the UCAT. So if you're applying for medicine or some other courses, you're gonna to need to sit the UCAT exam. And I sat my exam in August of 2020. After sitting the exam, I got my result and somehow I managed to score 3,050, which put me in the top 2% of candidates who sat it for that year, which I was super pleased with. But a few people have asked for some advice about how to do well in the UCAT. So I thought I'd make this video to hopefully share some of my top tips about how you can score high in the UCAT. So first of all, I'll be talking about how long would I recommend you revise for. I revised for about four weeks and in the first two weeks of my revision I was doing about two to two and a half hours a day and then in the last two weeks of my revision I was doing four to six hours um, with it gradually increasing as it got close to the exam. I would advise that you leave about four to six weeks to revise. I think anything more you'll definitely get really drained out by the time you sit the exam and anything less you might risk not doing as well but it's definitely an exam where the more time you put in the better your result will be. So for me I thought four weeks was the perfect amount of time because by the time my exam came up I felt that I'd reached my peak performance just then and I wasn't getting burned out by leaving it too late um, but what I would recommend is sort of booking your exam date based on your schedule I personally decided to sit it in mid-August because that gave me about four weeks from when I finished school to the actual exam date where I could revise and also gave me some time before school started to get my personal statement sorted and just get ready for school. But what I would recommend is maybe about six weeks before, have a look at some practice questions and see how you feel about it. And if you really, really struggle, then you know that you're gonna to need to put a lot more time to revise in it. But if you're doing them and you're finding them all right, then maybe you can spend a bit less time revising. As I say, it varies from each person to person. And some people might feel that four weeks is too little and some people may say that four, four weeks was too much. Um, every person is different and it, I guess it's kind of how you revise yourself as well. Next, I'll be talking about the resources I used. So when I first started revising, I used this book. It's by ISC Medical and it's got 1,250 UCAT questions. Or, um, this has like a lot of questions in it. Did I did all of the abstract reasoning, all of the verbal reasoning and all of the decision-making questions in this book. However, I wouldn't recommend this if I were to revise for it again because while it definitely was useful, I don't think it was the best use of my time and probably not the best use of money as well. But while this has some really good questions in it, I think that since the exam is on a laptop, the best resources and practice you can do would be on a laptop or a computer. And for me, once I moved on to using a digital resource to revise, I realized how much better it was than using this. So in the future, I probably wouldn't um, invest in this. But at the same time, if you really are struggling, you don't always have access to a computer then this is potentially a good option for you however the main resource that I used for my revision was a website called Medify someone who was in the year above at our school said that they used it for when they were revising for their UCAT and said it was really useful so I took their advice and decided to look into it looking at what people had said and a lot of places were recommending it, I decided to invest in it and I can definitely say it did help a lot Medify was a website which had a ton of questions for the UCAT as well as different video explanations tutorials and mock tests as well. What I really liked about it was that I had so many questions that it would be very, very difficult to complete all of them. And I think by the time I sat my UCAT, I had probably done in total like maybe a third of the total questions that they had. It's also really good because they time it for you as well, which allows you to stick with timing. And overall, I felt that the system that they had was very, very similar to what I had faced in the actual exam. Obviously it did come with a price and it's like a subscription base. So I think I bought the one month subscription. I would definitely say it was worth the money I paid for it. Other resources I used was the official UCAT website. This had a few questions. There wasn't a timer on it, which was a bit annoying, but um, I thought it was quite useful because obviously if it's coming from the official website, you know, it's gonna be very, very accurate to what you're gonna face in the actual exam, which I definitely thought was useful. However, don't just rely on this because there's not a lot of questions on there. The Medic Portal also had a good question bank and I know that you can access some of their questions for free. So if you're if you're just looking to see what the UCAT exam is like, then I would recommend them because you can have a little trial of some of the questions and see what um, it might be like. You can also go on different UCAT courses. Um, I personally didn't and I wouldn't really say it's necessary just because I think the UCAT is an exam where 
the way you do best is not by learning it from like a teacher or having someone explain it to you. The best way is to just do practice. I definitely courses might help you with a bit of a technique, but I think that it's not necessary and you can find the different techniques that you might need on YouTube. So I probably would just save my money and not go on a course and instead to use the time you would have spent on a course to just do the practice. I think that's a much better use of your time if, rather than paying extra money for a course. Now I'm gonna talk a bit about how I studied for this exam. So at first I started doing practice questions completely untimed on Medify. I would recommend you do this for about two to three days maybe just to get a bit of a feel for what the exam would be like. But as soon as you can, go into timed questions. UCAT is very much a time pressure exam. I believe that it's best to practice with the time limit as early as possible just so you can get used to what you'll be faced with in the actual exam. After I'd done some untimed practice questions, I then moved on to time practice questions, which I did for about a week and a half. And what I would do is I would select a section of the UCAT, um, select a set amount of questions, and then use what the recommended amount of time to do those questions. I thought this was a really good way that I could practice the individual sections and, and work on the skills that I really needed to practice um, under the time pressure that I would be faced with in the actual exam. I was doing about two hours a day. And during this time, I thought that was adequate because it was also summer and I wanted to go out in the sun and like spend some time not doing work as well. Then with two weeks before the exam, that's when I started looking at mock papers. I compiled a list of every single mock paper I had available to me. And from this list, I allocated each uh, mock paper to a different day. And I had about two mock papers to do each day. But I think it's very good to try and do as much as many mock papers as you can because it enables you to better identify your particularly weak areas, which you can go on to look at later, as well as making you get used to the format where you're sat down for two hours sitting an exam. Now I'll give you some general advice about sitting the UCAT. So the first piece of advice is don't underestimate it. The UCAT can be a really good exam to help boost your medical application, but it's not easy. It definitely does need a lot of work. And if you want to score well, then you're going to have to put in the work to be able to achieve that score. It doesn't happen overnight. So make sure you plan enough time to study for it so that you can do the best that you can. My second piece of advice would be why it's important not to underestimate it, don't put too much importance on this exam. If you go into it with thinking that this exam is all or nothing, then you might find that you find it a lot more difficult and having that pressure won't be good for you. A lot of unis don't mind a slightly lower UCAT score. A huge number of people will get into medicine with UCAT scores that are below average. As well as that, even if the UCAT doesn't end up going as well as you would like, there are a huge number of other factors that will play into your medical application. Your personal statement, your A-levels, and quite importantly, your interview. A lot of unis would prefer a candidate who performs really well at interview with a lower UCAT score than a candidate who doesn't do well at interview but has a high UCAT score. So don't try and put too much pressure on this exam because it's just one factor of many that will play into your application. And saying that, even if it doesn't go to plan, you still have the BMAT, which I think a lot of people are scared of, but it's definitely a really good option even if your UCAT doesn't go well. And if you know that the BMAT is something you might be sitting, then it can take a lot of pressure off just performing well at this UCAT exam. The third piece of advice is make sure you give yourself adequate time off while preparing. If you're preparing for four weeks straight, you might find that you get burnt out very easily. So what I would suggest is splitting your day into three, your, your morning, your afternoon, and your evening. And say if you've got two weeks before your exam um, and you're planning on studying for about four to six hours per day, what you can do is have a revision session for two of those sessions and have one of them off. So if you revise in the morning and afternoon, then take the evening off. If you decide to revise in the afternoon and evening, then revise, take the morning off. And that way you can ensure that you don't get too burnt up because it's so easy to over work yourself and not look after yourself properly so taking adequate time off is definitely essential. My fourth piece of advice is don't worry if your scores initially are low. When I started revising my scores were like 500, 400, they were really really low and I remember seeing on YouTube people who were saying how they got 800 in this section or like 700 in this section and I'm like how how are people getting this score? But it's really important you don't compare yourself, people online or maybe your friends even. Just focus on yourself and what you'll find is as you progress through time, your scores will increase very, very quickly. I think in the first week I was scoring low, but by the third week I was definitely doing a lot, lot better. So don't be disheartened if at first your scores seem very low. 
So that's about everything I have to say then. I'm planning on doing videos specific to each section of the UCAT as well as videos on the BMAT and other medical videos in the future. So definitely subscribe if that would be something you're interested in. Comment down below any other video requests you'd like or your thoughts or any advice to other people you want to share. And I hope you do really well in your UCAT exam. So best of luck with that. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.